Could a Formula One car really drive upside down a longer ceiling from aerodynamic force alone? Well, in this video, we're going to find out. A few years ago on the Other Driver 61 channel, I made a video exploring whether a Formula One car could drive upside down. So to test this theory, we had a circuit designer build a circuit in our factor so we could try this out in the sim. Now, I know it's only the sim, but we thought this would be a fun exercise nonetheless. So first of all, we have the 2020 Red Bull which is 746 kilos, so actually really heavy for an F1 car. But obviously with these new regulations, they do have a lot of downforce. So let's see if this goes upside down. It is my biggest hope uh, because they just do have so much downforce. So we're doing 195 miles an hour here. Let's have a go up the wall. And we're on top. <laughs> No problem there actually, and it's still got a lot of grip. I expected maybe for it to be a little bit, you know, wishy-washy on top here, but it's actually pretty good. You know, obviously not the grip that you'd have the other way up because we've got less pressure going through the tires, but let's head back down again, see if we can get it back down the loop, over the bumps. There you go, easy. Now what I want to try is to see how slowly I have to go before the car falls off. Now this is a good understanding of how much downforce the car's got, but also obviously uh, the weight of the car is also counting against that. But it will give us a good idea of, uh, of how much downforce or how easily the car is driving upside down along the ceiling of this um, tunnel that we've made. So 203 miles an hour, bring it down to 190, it's fine, 180. 170, 150, 145, 130, <laughs> 120, it's got to be getting close, we're going to run out of tunnel here, Red Bull F1 car is incredible, 114, getting light, there we go, so at about 115, oh, and it floated down pretty well there, but at about 115 miles an hour, it fell off. Okay, so next up, we're in the incredible 2004 Ferrari F1 car. These cars were over 900 brake horsepower, just over 600 kilos, and did have a lot of downforce. So I do hold quite a lot of hope that we're gonna be able to drive upside down on this tunnel. So, oh, God. Okay, so that didn't go so well. So as there are some bumps halfway up, the tunnel here that we could, just couldn't get out with the track builder. Uh, I'm going to try and get over them a little bit more quickly. There we go, we're on top. We've got the F1 car driving upside down. Now it definitely doesn't have the same amount of grip. There we go. <laughs> that the 2020 car had. Uh, it came dislodged much easier then. Um, so what I'm going to do is actually drop some of the fuel out of it put more downforce in the car and see if that affects it at all. Okay, so we're on minimum fuel, maximum wing. Let's see if this helps us. So we're driving the F1 car upside down. Feels a little bit better, but not that much. Let's slow down and see how long it takes us to fall off. So 185, one, 70, remember the 2020 was 115, 160, 150, becoming very light, 148, 145, 140, we're going to run out of one right, 130, <laughs> there you go, so 130 miles an hour um, before it didn't want to drive upside down anymore. Uh, which is still pretty impressive. Obviously, it doesn't have quite as much downforce compared to the weight um, as a 2020 car, but still impressive nonetheless. So when I made the original can of Formula One car drive upside down video, lots of people said, why don't you use a Formula E car? And the reason being is that one of the issues is with an internal combustion engine, when you drive upside down, a problem would be that all the oil comes back down through the engine and then it would actually seize itself. So the logical step would be to use a Formula E car. However, they're just simply not fast enough and don't produce enough downforce. On top of that, they also weigh 
uh, a massive 800 kilos which you'd have to drive upside down so you can see here that it's actually almost impossible I think to, to get it anywhere close to driving upside down because it doesn't have the attributes needed. Uh, let's have another go, see if we can do it a bit more with momentum, we'll drive up a bit harder. Kind of gets its way there but then no chance. So the car's just too heavy, doesn't have enough downforce and it's just not going to be possible to do it in the Formula E car. So next up we're trying the monstrous Mercedes CLR from 1999. Now if you remember correctly it was the car that actually took off at Le Mans with uh, Mark Webber ending up in the trees. Normally it should have a lot of downforce, really high top speed. So let's see if we can make it drive upside down along our tunnel. So heading up for 195 miles an hour, 200 miles an hour to get as much speed as we can. There we go, we've hit 200. Let's try and get it upside down over the bumps. Oh God. <laughs> okay, that didn't go to plan. Uh, let me have another go. Okay, so we've taken most of the fuel out of it. Dropped the ride height a little bit, added as much aero as we can. And I'll try and take it a little bit smoother this time over the bumps as we go up the side of the tunnel. So we're obviously we're not going quite as quickly now because of all the drag, but loads of rear wing in this car. Let's have a go. <laughs> nope, I don't think it's going to do it. It's not even that close to, to getting up there. You know, we get halfway up, maybe a little bit further, and it just won't go. Right, on to the next car. So next up, we have the 92 McLaren that Senna famously drove. Now, while the aerodynamics weren't very sophisticated on these cars back then, they did weigh only just over 500 kilos and they had 700 brake horsepower so they could make up for the lack of downforce with the reduction in weight so let's see if we can get this car to drive upside down Whoa. Mm, no is the first answer let's have another go again it was the bumps last time that disrupted the car and we don't know what that's doing to the aerodynamics of the floor and so on. So I'll try and get across them a little bit quick, more quickly this time. Get some good speed up first and take a wider line so I can cut across faster. <laughs> Massive crash. Okay, I don't think the aero is, is enough for this to, to ever happen in this 92 F1 car, unfortunately. Now, I did want to see if a road car could possibly do this. Um, so, I'm in a McLaren. They are 780 something brake horsepower, but they do weigh 1,300 kilos. So, I don't hold much hope that it can drive upside down, but I did want to see if a, you know, a normal car could do this. So 204 miles an hour flat out. Let's have a look. Oh. Nope. Okay, let's go make some changes to the car. See if we can add any aero to it. See if we can take some weight out of it. Okay, so I've managed to take 45 liters of fuel out of it and add some wing. Unfortunately, I don't think it's gonna be enough, but let's give it a go. Probably not going to be able to go quite as fast in a straight line. We'll let it creep up, we've got enough space, 198. Let's get to 200, we'll do it. Okay, let's go, 200 miles an hour. No. <laughs> so I think the McLaren is just simply too heavy. At 1300 kilos, it would have to have a massive amount of downforce to even get close to driving upside down on our tunnel. If you enjoyed this video, check out our more usual content where we teach you to be faster in the sim. If you're keen to really improve your technique and produce faster lap times, take a look at our sim racing course, which I'll link to in the description below. 
Thanks and make sure you subscribe to the Drive 61 Sim Racing channel.